How to make a nearly 14-ton fighter jet glide 100 kilometers, the US. Air Force captain said he had something to say, after his comrades were hit hard and leaking oil, he was hard behind, topped by his partner out of the dangerous war zone, successfully parachuted to escape, Pardo's push, as long as you do not give up. There are always more ways than difficulties. On March 10, 1967, Captain, Bob Pardo and Lieutenant Steve Wayne, radar slash weapons systems officer, taxi onto the runway in F-4 Phantom belonging to the 433rd Squadron, 8th Tactical Fighter Wing, USAF, along with three other Phantom based at Yuban Air Base, Thailand, to bomb the Thai Nguyen steel plant north of Hanoi, Vietnam. Many people say the F-4 Phantom looks ugly, but I may be the aesthetic level of extraordinary, has always felt that it is proportional, full of detail. The original Navy only wanted to design a naval two-seat all-weather fighter, but the bold design of McDonnell Douglas, risking the use of new engines with new aircraft, froze a balanced multipurpose fighter, in the second generation of aircraft, whether air superiority or ground attack. Have one of the best performance, the real understand the phrase adults do not make a choice. This aircraft, built for the Navy, eventually became the largest user of the Air Force and eventually produced more than 5,000 of them. Appearing on a large scale over the Vietnam battlefield at that time, disliking the MiG-21 contemporaries head-on. The feud between these two enemies is also an interesting story that we will talk about separately in a later issue. When Captain Pardo led this four aircraft formation, still 120 kilometers away from Thai Nguyen, they encountered anti-aircraft fire and the sky was covered with black smoke from shells exploding. They knew very well before they left that this was a high-risk mission, the Thai Nguyen steel plant was the only steel plant in Vietnam. And it was certain that there was intense anti-aircraft fire all around, but it was too much to start 120 kilometers away. Under heavy fire, Captain Earl Ammon and Lieutenant Robert Horton's No. 4 took a direct hit and nearly capsized. But an instrument check showed that the Phantom was still able to continue flying, and they decided not to return, but to continue the mission with their equipment. Soon, the target appeared in the front, the sky never appeared the Viet Cong fighters. But the anti-aircraft fire does not reduce. All the US planes began to drop their bombs on the target with their noses down through the artillery fire. In the rain of bullets, Oman's No. 4 was again hit by two shells, one of which hit the aircraft hard and caused fuel to start leaking rapidly. At the same time Pardo 3, which was dropping bombs, also took a hit and was hit again by a 37mm shell as it pulled up, knocking the whole aircraft out of power and starting to leak fuel. But fortunately the aircraft maneuvered all right. The two badly wounded F-4S quickly climbed to an altitude of 9,000 meters, an altitude that would save fuel on the one hand and allow them to glide farther when they ran out of fuel on the other. Pardo reported the situation over the radio to the lead pilot, who immediately plotted a course south for them and thoughtfully arranged for an air refueling plane 280 kilometers away. Although Pardo and Wayne's No. 3 was leaking a lot of fuel, it was no problem to use this route and fly to Laos to meet the air refueling plane. The problem was with Amman and Horton's plane No. 4, which was leaking fuel so fast that it could not even reach the Laos border, not to mention rendezvousing with the refueling plane. Over the radio, Amman told Pardo that he would fly as far as he could toward Laos and that he and Horton would eject when they ran out of fuel, the consequences of parachuting over North Vietnam were well known, and with the war already underway, the chances of surviving in a Vietnamese POW camp were too slim. At this moment, the two planes were flying between the Black and Red Rivers south of Hanoi, an airspace that was not safe and where MiGs could appear at any time. In the heat of the moment, a bold idea came to Pardo's mind. He carefully approached Amon's plane from the rear and slowly rammed it forward. He was going to try to use the $3.5 million supersonic fighter to push the other partner to continue flying. But as he approached number 4, the strong turbulence blew Pardo around. So Pardo informed Amon to drop the deceleration chute in order to open the aft deceleration chute bay. With such a small space, Pardo began to try to reach the landing point, but the Phantom's large fuselage brought too much turbulence, and despite Pardo's good flying skills, he was never able to get within 3 meters of the number 4, let alone use the sharp nose cone designed for high-speed flight to accurately reach the number 4's But Time and time again, he tried and failed, making Pardo sweat. He began to think about using the plane to hold the four machine, driving the three machine from the four machine slowly upward. When he was only a few dozen centimeters away from the number four, Pardo realized that this was not a good idea, and that if he leaned up there, he would break the number three's cockpit cover and cause new problems, and that the no. Three did not have enough fuel. Once the decision is made to jump, he and Wayne will not be able to jump out at this point, Oman's number 4, with its fuel tanks about to bottom out, was descending at 900m slash min Pardo could only slowly move backwards and disengage from the number 4 again. But as the tail of the number 4 came into view, Pardo had another new inspiration all of a sudden. 
He called Amon and asked him to open the landing hook of the F-4. As a fighter made for the Navy, the F-4 was born with the genes of a naval aircraft, and even after it was transferred to Air Force service, it still retained the landing hook for landing on aircraft carriers, not realizing that this small object could still play a big role in the air. Pardo again approached slowly upward from underneath the number 4. At this moment, the two aircraft were flying at 480 km per hour, and the wake of the F-4 kept Pardo's aircraft swaying, making it difficult to approach for a while. Pardo carefully adjusted the aircraft and gently pulled up the nose. Finally getting the landing hook on the middle windshield of the number 3. The windshield took the full weight of this F-4 and managed to give it increased flight speed but the sudden turbulence stirred up both planes and the tail hook slid out at once. But anyway, the trick seemed to work. Pardo again slowly top, he must carefully control the thrust, this small glass is only 3 centimeters thick, in case the top broke, this big hook will instantly insert it into his head, every action must be like walking on thin ice. What's more, the landing hook is not fixed. But designed to rotate left and right, the top for a few dozen seconds, the power transfer between the two aircraft will be broken up, only to start again. It didn't take long for Oman's number 4 to completely flame out, although completely out of power and its wake much less intense. Pardo was able to push the wobbly number 4 relatively steadily and consistently. Squeezing again and again, the top windshield suddenly cracked with a spider web of cracks, and Pardo immediately disengaged contact. Instead using a small piece of metal in front of the windshield to push forward against the landing hook. His efforts paid off, and the rate of descent of Oman's number 4, from 900m slash min to 450m slash min, was reduced. Both planes were doing their best to remain stable and just shared a pair of engines, heading southwest toward Laos, but next thing you know, there was a problem with just that pair of engines as well. Pardo's push reduced the descent rate of Oman's no. 4 to 300m slash min at one point and increased the glide distance by at least three times, but it still did not fly out of Vietnam. Suddenly, the alarm light of number 3 came on and the left engine temperature rose sharply to 1000 degrees Celsius. The shrapnel from the anti-aircraft gun must have penetrated the combustion chamber and the uncontrolled flame would blow up the engine at any moment. Pardo had no choice but to turn off the left engine, and the descent rate then increased to 600m slash min, making it impossible to maintain safe flight. Pardo was caught in a dilemma and tried to start the left engine again, but the engine started to catch fire after less than a minute and had to be shut down. The two F-4s were now left with one engine, and they held on for 10 minutes flying southwest, but it was this life-saving 10 minutes that allowed them to successfully approach the Laotian border. After radioing their position to base, the two F-4s detached in twin pairs. Amon and Horton were the first to eject their aircraft and land in the jungle. Pardo and Wayne flew for two more minutes on the only remaining engine, after running out of fuel completely, they also both ejected and parachuted. All four of them were lucky enough to escape the Viet Song despite being injured by the high overload of the ejection seats they were rescued by rescue helicopters. Ironically, due to the anti-war wave within the United States at the time, the US Army was under tremendous public pressure and the Air Force was very sensitive to aircraft battle damage. When Pardo returned to base, instead of being commended for his actions, he was criticized by his leaders for the loss of his fighter planes. It was not until 1989, more than two decades later, when the US Air Force reinvestigated the incident, that the four airmen received belated recognition. They were each awarded the Silver Star. The Pardo push also became a classic flying miracle. Thank you for seeing the end, remember to leave a like. We will see you next time.